and welcome, my Gemini Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your To Be a Soulmate reading, a new thing that I'm doing on the channel, uh, September, October 2020. I am your reader, Mark Angela Lyons, Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, uh, president of Drawing the Circle Productions, the Archangel of Lyons, Mark Angela Lyons, but you can call me Mal. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. My subscribers, thank you so much for returning, for following along, your likes, your subscribes, your comments, your hitting the notification bell. All of that stuff has been helping people find my work. Um, you are my last video uh, read of the day because I have clients coming uh, later. Uh, so very, very well online, you know what I mean, coming to our clients later. So very, very happy uh, to be doing this work. Couldn't do it without you. Truly, truly appreciate it. And if you are new to my channel, please do consider liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell and all that jazz to help me. Uh, really, I guess the next real goal I'm looking for that's sort of meaningful for me is to hit 30,000. I know I haven't even hit 2,000 yet, but that's when you can have memberships because I do extended readings on Vimeo, so I'd be able to do them all here. So it just seems practical. Eh, it's a goal worth working for. Go to help me get there. I really appreciate it. Otherwise, let's get down to business, shall we? This is a new type of reading. Usually in uh, this time slot, whatever in the schedule, I'd be doing the Path of True Love reads, which are wonderful. And I love doing them, particularly with the Celtic cross spread. That was a lot of fun. But my guide switched it up. It's like, this is sort of the same thing. This is how to be a soulmate reading, right? And it's to answer the question, how can I be a mate to my own soul, which is all the self-healing stuff, right? The, all the spiritual path, essentially walking the path of true love. Um, but also, how can I be a soulmate, right? Like, how can I be in a soul contract in a healthy way where we help each other heal, which is the foundation of a soulmate uh, contract. Soulmates, twin flames, not the same things. There are links in the description box below that will explain that both for me and for Matt Kahn that, uh, that I find very hopeful to redefinition in that way. Um, but also how you can be a better soulmate in the contracts that you already have. Like for instance, my mom and I are soulmate contract. My father and I were twin flame. So how can I be like a better soulmate to my mom, right? That sort of idea. Um, but the idea is holographically is you become the mate of your own soul as a result usually of twin flame contracts you learn how to be your own soulmate um you're also helping to heal the collective, right? Through unity consciousness, through the quantum entanglement of souls embodying into form, the ascension of planet Earth, the great awakening, the apocalypse, whatever you want to call it, well, it's all one thing, right? So uh, this is what you can help on all sorts of different levels by mating with your own soul. So it's only 11 cards, right? These are not hours and hours long, these readings. Uh, it's just to kind of get you some clues, some tips, some hints. We're only uh, using, we're using two healing systems, right? The uh, uh, the Caroline Mace Archetype deck and uh, the Healing Mantra deck by Matt Kahn, right? So we begin and end with healing systems. We have three oracles. So we'll be getting three cards, uh, one each from each of those. And as well as we're going to get a simple timeline, the yin, the inner, with the Daughters of the Moon Tarot. And we will clarify those uh, with the Mythic Tarot for the Yang, the external, right? So 11 cards. Let's see what I can get you. It's a general read, take what resonates, leave what doesn't, check your other signs, because you have more than one soulmate contract in many other ways. Like for instance, for like, it's the last reading I'll do, but the Pisces one, I wanna see, because that's the one, that's my Pisces moon, right? Like, so I wanna kind of feel how I can be a better mate to my soul that way emotionally, different than my Virgo sun, it's complete opposite. You see what I'm saying? My Leo rising, my Venus uh, uh, in Libra. So check them out, right? It's only gonna help you learn to love yourself and be the mate of your own soul, making you a better soulmate, even the romantic sexual kind, right? So it's sort of doing your ends. You don't have to wait for people. <laughs> wait till they get their act together. You wait to hold your breath, right? This is about empowering yourself. Good, so we ready to rock and roll? Um, focus on your breath. I will do the same. You so that you can stay in the present moment and feel what resonates for you. Even though you're an air sign, try and pay attention to what's going on in your physiology as the reading goes by. I will do the same to stay in the present moment to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace from my mystical pantheons as I do. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, me, John Jet, Lita Ford, <laughs> the other runaways, we're right here with you. Breathe. Cherry curry. <sighs> you big cherry bomb. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, all the decks that I read are in the description box below. Thank you for reminding me of my collective pantheons, please. 
One card in clarity, a uh, Caroline Mace archetype card. What is the dominant soul power being alchemized that they can alchemize uh, by being a better mate to their soul? Uh, this Gemini collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. How can they, what do they need to be a better soulmate to themselves? Alchemizing the lead to gold of this dominant soul power, the soul contract, September, October 2020, or timeless, please just leave it in my hands, my collective pantheons, the what they need, which is the Liberator archetype. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I have the Liberator archetype. Tends to show up in my romantic sexual relationships because I meet slaves. Not the literal kind, but the ones who are enslaved to this or enslaved to that. I would love to, but I can't because womp womp, right? It's like, and I'm like, <laughs> burn your bra, girl. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. Don't crack up. Bend your brain. See both sides. Throw off your mental chains. Ooh, ooh, ooh. from the book of uh, Jones, Howard Jones. The shadow attribute, imposing your own tyranny over those you claim to liberate, ignoring legitimate constraints. Here, let me liberate you. Now do what I say, right? <laughs> That's the shadow side of it. We've only seen that play itself out on planet Earth over and over and over again. Uh, the light attribute, freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns. Perfect for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm really perfect for that, right? It's like, look at it this way, right? Like that way of thinking like racism, perfect example. It's so archaic, it's so stupid. It violates the idea of unity entirely, right? It's the root chakra, the root chakra deadly sin of hubris, right? Is what racism is all based on. Hubris, I'm better than you, right? Even on a collective level, a tribal level. My tribe's better than your tribe. It's just ridiculous. That's an outmoded thing. Look what it's doing to the planet. Obviously, it doesn't serve. <laughs> Liberator. So you could be liberating yourself from ideas as well as liberating others. So we'll keep that in mind as we're going to uh, move to uh, the next two oracles. We've got the Quan Yin oracle. So good for what you need to do inside of yourself. The Yin, the Divine Feminine. And the Blue Angel Oracle for Archangel Michael. It's Archangelic Stud Muffin, if you ask me, if you've never seen him. I keep saying the best way I can I can explain him is he looks like the kind, sweet, gigantic, long-haired, sexy quarterback. <laughs> it's just like kind to people. It doesn't beat people up and like protect you. I have a crush on an Archangel, but that's okay. I'm the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angel of Lions. And I think the feeling's mutual. Shall we? Breathe. Hmm. At least he returns calls. <laughs> Quan Yin, <laughs> my beloved. <laughs> if you can make Quan Yin giggle, it's a good day. Please, Quan Yin, one card in clarity. For this Gemini collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, the Fliberty gibbets that they are, bless their souls. Bless their incarnate souls, please. What do you say they need to be a soulmate uh, for this Gemini Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign? September, mid-September to mid-October 2020 or timeless whenever they are watching this, please. My beloved Kuan Yin, what is your guidance and your grace so they can be a soulmate? Princess of the Autumn Harvest. Considering that's right around the corner, I'm going to call that just straight up interesting. Princess of the Autumn Harvest. Yes, autumnal equinox, Maven, right around the corner, really a week or two. Uh, so card number 22, uh, Princess of the Autumn Harvest. Now, I'm gonna, of course, I'm going to read it out of the book, but I'm only going to do the first part in italics, which is a bitty, teeny tiny little type. And then the prayer at the end. You can see there's a lot in between. Breathe. Card number 22, Princess of the Autumn Harvest. The Princess of the Autumn Harvest brings gifts of bounty and blessings for efforts and actions of the past. Okay, so it makes sense. The harvest, you planted seeds, you tended. Now you're getting uh, the reaping of that which you have sown. Uh, it is a time when fruit of labors, where, is, is that grammatically correct? Hold on a second. It is a time when fruit of labors, 
uh, is ripe for the picking. I have some trouble with the grammar there. A beautiful blessing is on its way to you now. This may come in the form of a spiritual gift, an opportunity, a windfall of abundance, a significant relationship, or an important friendship, and more. Like we needed the end more. Uh, with gratitude in your heart, you will recognize the blessing when it comes to you and it will serve you perfectly. Be open to receive it, knowing it is justly deserved. Okay, so that's really saying your work has come to you. Now, if you've been taking this time on planet Earth, you know, just the majority of 2020, sort of going through your stuff and getting rid of what doesn't serve and liberating yourself, right? This liberator, liberator archetype, freeing yourself from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns. That's a lot of clearing of the garden. That's a lot of work, right? Cleaning the garden of your mind, weeding the, the garden of the mind, so to speak, of that which no longer serves, right? Although an herb is just a, a plant you don't know the use for. I have herbalist friends, obviously. Uh, then that thing of really liberating yourself that as a result, now you're getting the harvest of that in some way, shape, or form. So let's do the prayer of divine blessing from the princess of the autumn harvest. Please breathe. Because I don't pray in vain. I am divinely blessed. My heart so full of blessings, it overflows through my entire being and energy field. I receive blessings so easily. My joy inspires others to be open to blessings too. The princess of the autumn harvest, beloved Kuan Yin, knows my worthy heart and bestows abundant gifts to me now. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Princess of the Autumn Harvest. If you're wondering when will I know the opportunity when it comes, it will move you in your heart with gratitude. That's how you'll know. It's going to be that thing of the heart. Now, what I see is the majority of you all have had chains around your heart from receiving. Um, because of betrayal, because you were promised one thing and it never showed up, or you were promised an apple and you got a rock. I got a rock, right? Very Charlie Brown, Halloween. Um, so this is sort of like any work that you've done, either around rejection, feeling that, right? The chains of loss, the chains of pain. Everybody goes through loss, but the uh, emotional baggage. So if you have been doing the psychological or the emotional work, the spiritual path work, you know what I'm talking about, shadow work, any of that, to free yourself up from that, that's, uh, th I can feel that, that, that wealth coming to you, but understand from the divine feminine point of view, it is that receptive magnetic. So even though it's showing up on the outside, it's saying that you are ready to receive. In other words, if it's on its way and it's not ready to receive, it's going to bounce off your energy field, right? You know, like when you say I love you to somebody, it just bounces off their field and goes to somebody else, right? It's sort of like that. It's saying you've liberated yourself. Receive. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's ask Archangel Michael what he says you need. Breathe. Because hmm, he's such a liberator. Oh, and he's so cute. <laughs> Archangel Michael. Hi, last reading of the day, at least for YouTube. Please, one card in clarity for the Gemini Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, right? What do they need from your point of view, from your archangelic wisdom, guidance, grace, love, omniscient, adorableness, please? I'm flirting with an archangel. Please, uh, what do you see that they need to be a soulmate this September, October 2020, or timeless, the Gemini Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs? Please, what do they need to be a soulmate, beloved Archangel Michael? Ancient of Days, the Eternal Flame. I believe it's meant to be, darling. I watch you when you are sleeping. You belong with me. Do you feel the same or am I only dreaming? Probably just dreaming. I'm dealing with a, ge a Gemini. Uh, Ancient of Days, card number 31. Card number 31. Ancient of Days. The key word here, words, I should say, the eternal flame. <laughs> say my name. <laughs> Sun shines through the rain. Give me some 
Susanna Hoff side eye on that one. Uh, you are the creative expression of the life force that flows through you. And so you are full of endless possibilities. Okay, I get the eternal flame part of it. Uh, listening to the infinite wisdom of your soul. Oh, I get what it's saying. Listen to the infinite wisdom of your soul, for it will guide you to creation of love and light. Now, love being the expression of the, the open heart, light being the expression of truth within the mind, right? So again, a balance of masculine and feminine here, that you may have broken some chains around your heart and your mind here, and experiencing more the eternal nature that is uh, the nature, that what, it, what it's really about within. Feel the flame aglow in your heart. This flame is your intuitive wisdom. Let it burn through all illusions and obstacles so that your path may be clear and bright. Liberated. Observe your breath. It will lead you to the golden temple deep within you. Observe your breath. It will lead you to the golden temple deep within you. That's really cool. Enter the majestic... the majestic? Enter the majestic glory that is really you. Feel yourself reborn with each new breath as you connect with the timeless love and potential that you hold. Go forth and live your potential. All is possible for you now. This is really about being the mate of your own soul, embracing your own soul and allowing it to embrace you as the eternal flame your soul has always been. See, because it's not that you have a soul, you are a soul, right? C.S. Lewis, you don't have a soul, you are a soul, right? That was chosen to incarnate into this body with this name and your name, rank, and, and social security number, right? All of that. Uh, already pre-written for you to come in here. So that eternal flame, that eternal love, that eternal light that you are, embracing that and mating with that. It is no small matter, this round and delicious globe, moving so exactly in its orbit forever and ever, without one jolt or the untruth of a single second. I do not think it was made in six days, nor in 10,000 years, nor 10 billions of years. Walt Whitman. I like a Walt Whitman quote with Archangel Michael. Loved the mall, too. It's been a while since I've been to the Walt Whitman Mall. It's a very Long Island specific reference. I used to work at Body, Mind, and Soul across the street. In the 90s, I had blonde hair. <laughs> It was a long time ago. So, you know, that's easy to plug in in the sense, like, what are we looking at here, right? The liberator. That to allow that light of the soul, that eternal flame, to burn through you, right? That wisdom of the heart to burn through you, liberating you, burning away that which you no longer were. Now, it doesn't mean that you're burning away evil. It's just... When I was a child, I played with childish things. Now I am an adult, I put away the things of childhood. It's it's the transformation, growth and evolution, liberation, right? Like, and I, I say this a lot. It's like, don't talk to strangers is really good for 44-year-olds. It's a nightmare in 44-year-olds, right? It's like we outgrow stuff. It's not that it wasn't necessary. We all have spiritual sacred cows that are being slaughtered left, right, and center right now so that we can really grow up and evolve into the truth of unity consciousness, mating with our own soul, which is one with everything and bringing in everyone and everything that we need to grow and evolve. It's, it's just how it works. You can vision board yourself into another dimension if you like, but your, your soul is going with you and it's going to bring you what you need to heal, to grow, to learn, and to become the best that you can be. To say to life boldly, all right, make me the best that I can be. Destroy what needs to be destroyed. Create what needs to be created. I give up. I surrender. Have your way with me. That's mastery, or at least the path of, just saying, ancient of days. Let's ask your higher self uh, through the whispers of love oracle. A really cute guy just walked by my window. Distract much, Gemini's? Breathe. Ah, oh, there you are. Oh, the higher selves of all involved. It's always such a pleasure connecting with the higher self pantheon. Please, one card in clarity for the Gemini collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs. What do they need to be a soulmate here? Because we've got the liberator archetype. Princess of the autumn harvest, which feels like something so wonderful and golden, like that, not necessarily literal gold, but that golden warmth harvest, right? That, that, that autumn 
gold and red coming for them, but powered with this wisdom, burning them free, the eternal flame, everything that they need, just transforming them from the inside out. So what do they need to know in order to be a soulmate uh, this September, October 2020, or timeless, please, the higher selves of all involved? Have patience. Love is patient and kind always. This is an ongoing thing. Eternity doesn't need to rush <laughs> because eternity, eternity doesn't mean all time. Eternal doesn't mean all time. It means outside of time, timeless. So something that is timeless, it, it just simply is. It doesn't rush. It doesn't wait. It just unfolds, right? Like the blossoming of a flower. You can try and speed it up, force it open, but it ain't going to be pretty, right? So be patient. Love is kind and patient always. And that's also to say that your soul is being love and kind and patient with you. It understands. Now, remember, you are it's not that you have a soul, you are a soul. But that thing of identifying with the self lowercase s or the self capital S is an ongoing thing back and forth until the lowercase s is integrated and absorbed into the uppercase s. I'm teaching again, that's what I'm doing. All right. We got four cards on the table, right? One healing system, three oracles. Uh, let's get you some tarot narrative. We'll take three Daughters of the Moon for the internal yin, past, present, future involved here. Uh, and we will take three of the mythic tarot for the external, the yang, the physicality, or the d feminine, how it expresses itself uh, as masculine energy, past, present, future. We'll get all six cards down and then flip them over. Past, then present, then future. Please breathe. <sighs> My goddesses, please. I need three cards. Simple timeline, past, present, future. For this Gemini Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, what do they need to be a soulmate? The September, October 2020 or timeless, please. One for the past. Feels like something that they already know, but they need to be aware of. Something for the present, please. Just leave the card in my hand. What do they need to be a soulmate? Like right now in the present-ish. Wow. I, a little indecision going on there, Gemini's. Oh, what a shock. Please, my goddesses, just leave one card in my hand. We'll take that one because two fell out there. And uh, lastly, where are they headed? What is the future for them becoming a soulmate? September, October 2020. You're timeless. Let's get the mythic tarot on top of those and then we'll flip them two at a time, past and present and future. My gods, Hermes in particular, please, you know the deal. You gave me the spread, so please, one card for the past. And no? Oh, tricky, tricky, tried to slip two in there. Please, just one card for the past for this Gemini Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. One for the present. What do they need to be a soulmate in the present? What do they need uh, to be a soulmate in the future? September, October 2020, or timeless in the past. Oh, you've got the card of the star with meditation. That's lovely. Seven of Blades. So you've been praying. You've been hoping. You've been aligning yourself. You've been sitting in stillness or visualizing, contemplating. I mean, meditation really to me is all about stillness. I'm not trying to still the mind, but that thing of listening. Feel how still my energy got? And I can hear something very, very far away, like a ringing, right? But to do that with hope, with grace, with the star, you made your prayer, <laughs> right? What you want, your heart's desire. I mean, what is it that we hope for more than anything else but the manifestation of our heart's desires? But we have doubts about that, right? So we have to liberate ourselves from our own fears little by little by little. It's not a weekend workshop to do that because we didn't write what's written on our hearts. They were written before we came in. Right? It's part of the soul contract that we agreed to. Uh, so where you are now, very interesting, on the inner, you've got the Taurus card. So we are looking at a stability here a groundedness, a real focus on values, like whatever has happened to, to in the past, just in life in general, your values, your honor, your ethic, 
Taurus, everybody wants to make it about money and abundance, and I get that. And yes, Princess of Harvest, it is coming. But let us not forget, second house energy is really about bedrock lifelong values. Like, what is really a value to you? Getting an abundance, I don't know. Like, you can get an abundance of, of junk mail. Thanks. Like, <laughs> it's not what I wanted, right? Be more specific. Uh, but this is, is really about like honesty and integrity and family and truth and love and right the the immortal nature of your soul the eternal flame that stability that power that rooted grounded unconditional divine love at your core right that kind of stability and foundation here because with the card of the hanged man it's saying right now you are in a place of saying okay I let go. Definitely a card of liberation. Now remember, the hangman isn't corporal punishment. It's someone who voluntarily, not so much in this case, this is Prometheus being hung from a, walk, uh, a rock with his liver being pecked out on the daily. Great fun for stealing fire. But it was a sacrifice he was willing to make. So there is often a letting go here, but usually it's a letting go of something mental. Now, I feel like if you are doing that, if you're having to like sacrifice and let stuff go, then make sure it's again, sort of like weeding the garden, we have the corn mother here, the card of Taurus, that it's something that's making room for something more honorable in your life, something that's more foundational in terms of a lifelong value that's in alignment with your core values. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Um, because it's worth sacrificing something for something of value, something that really means something, something that is of the soul. In other words, the, the here, I'll give you a perfect example, just to put it in a romantic context, because it's easy. You're single, and there's this guy who's all right, but you really want that connection, that feeling. Uh, it's like on dating apps. This guy last night got really upset because he was passing through town and he wanted to hook up. I was like, first of all, I don't know you. Second of all, can you prove your medical history, particularly recently? You know why. Um, and, and the other thing I said was like, I really hope that what you seek finds you. Um, but right now I'm not a snack. I'm a, a, a 12 course banquet. And I'm not doing that with someone who's just passing through town. I'm worthy of more. And he got really upset. Well, I did reject him, kind of, sort of. But really saying, it's like, mm, I could go with that. I could go with the meh. I mean, maybe it would have been great. I don't know. Maybe it could have been my soulmate. But I think if it had been my soulmate, right? Wouldn't it be like with that, that harvest card? It's like your heart would just be like, oh, I wasn't there. So I had to sacrifice for something to make room in the field, in the garden for something of value, lifelong value, uh, to manifest, which is interesting because where you're headed in this, uh, in this process is the Leo card and the inner, uh, creativity and good fortune, right? Very pleasurable. While on the outside, you've got the death card. Now remember, don't freak out about the death card. It's not the end. It's the 13th card in the deck out of 21, 22 cards, depending on the system you're working with of tarot. So it is about a transformation. So it can be that your internal creativity here, right? You receiving, right? Opening up all this reception, like the, the, the eternal flame clearing you out, you opening up to receive the princess of harvest. The death card here could be a very big physical transformation for the better. Right, particularly with the Leo card there, it's something that's gonna feel good, right? Leo energy, fifth house, all about pleasure, right? Relaxation, basking in the warmth of the fixed fire of the sun. Uh, really, games, sports, sex, romance, all of that stuff in the internal. And it doesn't mean the death card on the outside means and there's no more of that. No, it means that there is from this eternal flame the death card of perhaps rising from the ashes, things transforming, changing form uh, in a way that suits that mother of flames, that fixed fire, that Leo card, uh, the queen of wands, if you will, that passion on the inside really transforming you and transforming things around you and does feel for the better. This all feels really lovely. Not a clunker so far. Even the death card don't feel like a clunker. So... Let's not be judgmental of our cardamantic process. I know too many words. 
Uh, let's do your last card down. The Healing Mantra deck by Matt Kahn. The Ascended Masters of Soulmate Contracts. Shall we? Breathe. Oh, you feel so good. Oh, my Ascended Masters. I know. I know. From where you sit, you've already watched this movie before. Please, one card in clarity. The Perfect Healing Mantra. For the Gemini Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, what do they need? What is the perfect healing mantra that they need, even if they forgot everything else on the table? May they remember all they need to remember. But even if they did, that they could remember this mantra and work it, that they could be a better mate to their own soul, right? That they could be a, a soulmate just in general, right? To bring that power, those contracts within themselves, as well as to bring their soulmate contract partners to them. September, October, or... Uh, 2020 or timeless, please. What is their perfect healing mantra, my beloved Ascended Masters of Soulmate Contract? Greeting. Wellness. Uh, the Aries card got... Uh, the Aries card. The Aries got this exact same mantra. Greeting wellness. Balance is the key to a life of infinite miracles. And I'll tell you right now, having just read this one earlier... You can't see that. <laughs> um... It is about self-care. It's it's about uh, like diet, like what you're eating. It's it's about bringing your body into balance, right? Because with greeting well wellness, balance is the key to a life of infinite miracles. If you want a life of infinite miracles, which does feel like there is this payoff coming with this princess of the autumn harvest, and have patience. What do you do in the meantime? Greet wellness. Balance is the key to a life of miracles. Now, here on the deck, it's a life of infinite miracles. I keep forgetting that. It's different in the booklet. When wellness is welcomed, you are taking responsibility for the upkeep and preservation of your body as your sacred vessel of spiritual growth. In other words, you are not the body, right? And here we are. We're looking at really a symbol of the body, this Taurus, right? Fixed earth card here. So it, it might be very much right now saying, all right, I got to change the way I look at my body, right? To see it as the vehicle for my spiritual growth and development. In other words, without a body, I'm a soul. And that's lovely. I'm an eternal soul, right? The eternal flame, the ancient of days, who we really are, right? Um, but I'm in this body, and I'm on this journey, and I'm here to learn stuff. So let me start seeing my body not as who I am, but as a, a, a sacred vessel of spiritual growth. In balance, you may come to see how endless wanting only creates more things to want. So true. Treadmill. Uh, hamster wheel, when operating from patterns of instant gratification, you are likely chasing after happiness that is out of your reach as your body remains out of balance. Not enough sleep, too much sleep, too many carbs, not enough carbs, you know, finding that balance. Uh, it burns you out, so you just keep chasing the dragon. It's a 1980s version. This is resolved by learning to care for the body physically, emotionally, energetically, and nutritionally, essentially holistically. Uh, as your life comes into greater balance, you will likely sense true happiness, not as the end result of specific outcomes, but as the energy created by taking the time to truly care for yourself. This is about being your own mate, allowing your soul to participate in the balancing of your body and you as the servant, ah, eh, you're not the servant of the soul. You are the soul manifested into form, but to play both roles, right? So I'm going to ask my soul, what is it that I can do to bring my, bal my body into balance for infinite miracles? And it's gonna tell me, and then I'm gonna do that to the best of my ability and then also love my body from the point of view of the soul energetically hand in my heart saying, I love you, darling. I love you, my beautiful body. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is being the mate of your own soul, playing both roles. This mantra is ideal for cultivating self-love, improving self-worth, and letting go of compulsive uh, tendencies. Really, really, really beautiful. Really beautiful. And it does feel like with the liberator, you are going to be liberating yourself some, from some patterns, right? Maybe even some compulsive tendencies. Like people don't realize what it when something is compulsory. It's an interesting word, right? And the word impulse, of course, is referenced there. So we all have impulses, but what does it mean to be compulsive? You can't help yourself. 
Those are chains. This is about breaking those chains, both through, oh, it's, oh my god, you got three major arcana cards in the Mythic Tarot. I didn't even realize that. So really, just if we looked at the Mythic Tarot on the outer, keep following the star, the hope, the guidance, the grace, right? Because you are going through a sacrifice, a letting go, perhaps just seeing things differently, maybe your true nature as an eternal being, that transforms everything on the outside. And I do feel like with the internal there, the Seven of Blades, right, that meditation with the star, the Mother of Blades, I'm already doing the overview, we'll do this again in a minute, uh, but then really bringing you uh, into uh, that death card in the future, that transformation, but with the Mother of Flames, Leo, it's something that you wanted, right? It's something that is desired. All right, let's, let's pick up, uh, pop up the picture, we'll look at the whole thing. Nice deep breath. Magic clap. Uh, we've got you, my Gemini, as the liberator archetype in the shadow, imposing your own tyranny over those you claim to liberate. Well, you haven't really liberated them if you're imposing your tyranny, right? Little, little bit of a boo-boo there. Ignoring legitimate constraints. And I said, like, if somebody is, you know, in recovery, like, ah, have a drink. <laughs> you know, that's ignoring a legitimate constraint. The light attribute, freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns. That does, I'm feeling that throughout you. Many Geminis tend to be liberated. It's, Come on, let's see it differently, right? What if we looked at it this way? Um, and with Kuan Yin talking about the princess of the autumn harvest, whatever the work that you've done in the fields of your soul, in the fields of your mind, your heart, your body, uh, that there is an autumn harvest coming in. Considering autumn is right around the corner, I wouldn't consider that too literal, but I would say that's probably uh, on the nose there, timing-wise. Uh, Archangel Michael's talking about you are the Ancient of Days, the eternal flame. To let that flame of your heart, that true eternal wisdom that you have gathered lifetime after lifetime, that love, that truth, to burn through you, liberating through you. And again, that relates to the death card as well in the future position of the tarot there, of that really, that phoenix of being consumed by soul fire and being purified of that which doesn't serve you, but particularly with have patience, love is patient and kind always, then this is an ongoing thing. This is not going to be a once and done. This isn't going to be a gigantic um, uh, explosion of spiritual transformation, so long as it might be something that you are being slowly prepared for and to have patience. And I do see in the timeline with three major arcana cards right uh, right in front of my eyes here, the star, the hanged man, and the death card, the star with the seven of blades in this deck meditation, not the sneaky sneaky of the usual tarot, that through an introspection, there is a tuning to guidance and grace about something about the outside world, being guided to what? Hopefully, infinite miracles, which is indicated again in the mantra card here. So what you have right now is to really come from that solid place, the mother of pentacles, right? Uh, the, the queen of pentacles, the Taurus card, the great corn mother, to really change the way you look at. Make some sacrifices, perhaps, in order to bring your life into balance. Balance is a key to a life of infinite miracles. So look at uh, what you're eating. Look at it differently. How you're talking to your body, right? How you're spending your time getting enough rest, really nurturing the body, the physical vehicle as a sacred tool, if you will, a sacred vehicle, a sacred tool of spiritual transformation and growth, because then you're going into what feels like, and this sounds weird, a pleasurable death, almost like le petit mort, right, the little death, the orgasm, but that mother of flames, that Leo vibe, that queen of of wands that really, I love the queen of wands. She's very sexy, even as a guy, you know, regardless of the gender there. Very passionate, very warm, but very fixed fire too, like stable, uh, fixed fire, not kind of all over the place. And with that death, that could also be the fixed fire of the, the crucible of transformation that you're going through. But I gotta say, bringing yourself into balance being the key to a life of infinite miracles. This is about you becoming a soulmate. This is about you loving yourself in a whole different way that isn't just theoretical. It's not just mantras and affirmations and visualizations. This is actually you making some changes in your life with the hanged man, perhaps voluntarily seeing what needs to go, and then 
uh, the death card, it being transformed via the element of fire because you want to transform here. Almost as if the love of the soul so incarnates within you that it burns away the eternal flame, the Ancient of Days incarnates within you so strongly as your soul burning away that that which doesn't serve you for now, to make room for that autumn harvest to come in, keeping in mind that really all you need to do here is greet wellness by participating, finding that balance is the key to a life of infinite miracles, having patience and allowing the harvest of the princess of the autumn harvest to be collected. Really, really neat. I have to say the first three readings of this new series I like a lot. Even the cards are just coming up very, very uh, uh, symbiotic, uh, s stable, soothing, symbiotic, satisfying, just like a soulmate contract. I'm really, really digging this. So, uh, may the Gemini Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs be blessed with all that they need. September, October 2020 are timeless to be the mate of their soul, to liberate themselves from outmoded ideas and limitations, allowing the harvest to come in as their soul, the Ancient of Days, gives them the light, the love that they need, burning away that which no longer serves them putting away the things of childhood, but yet having patience, allowing the new things to come in as the harvest does come, coming from a place of that hope, that guidance, that grace through internal meditation and contemplation. And as a result of that, seeing things differently, really turning themselves upside down to see things from a different perspective of what is really of value to them, what needs to be fortified, strengthened, and balanced as they then go through that creativity and good fortune of the death card, transforming them, perhaps liberating themselves from leaded shields, keeping out their golden good as they greet wellness, learning that balance is the key to a life of infinite miracles for their healing, their well-being, the healing and well-being of their soulmate contracts, and the healing and well-being for all concerned in unity consciousness. Five-dimensional, yes siree, so motive And so it is. Oh, my gems, I love you so much. You are outrageous, and this reading is truly, truly, truly outrageous, my gems. Wishing you the very best and the very blessed of it all as, again, the garbage truck comes. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> oh, please do like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and all that jazz. I love you. Help me get to 30 grand subscribers so that I can uh, I, I can do my extendeds here because next week I have to start with those twin flamers again. <laughs> Wishing you all the very best and the very blessed of September, October 2020, my darlings. Hail. Farewell. And blessed, blessed be.